Hello YouTube, it's been a while since my last video and I apologize for this. If you're at all interested in why I was gone, there is an explanation in the description. Anyways, today I'm reviewing a Yandere OC. To put it simply, the word Yandere is a combination of the two Japanese words Yandere meaning to be sick and Dere Dere meaning to be lovestruck. In anime, a Yandere is usually seen as a sweet and charming person but they hide a very dark and sadistic personality. They're usually very protective and obsessed with whoever they're in love with, their senpai. With that being said, let's begin. I was asked by a sketch maniac on DeviantArt to review their OC, Tomiko-kun. Starting with the appearance, I think he's adorable. I love the drawing style, the only complaint I have is that the line art is kind of messy. Some of the lines don't connect and they seem really uneven. I actually asked the creator what drawing program they used and they said Manga Studio 4. From how the lines look, they seem like vector tool lines. Now I haven't used the program in a long time, but I remember that the vector tool, you could actually edit where the lines are placed. You can do the same thing with the line tools and paint tool Sai. Although it's a time consuming process to fix every line, the end result gives you smooth lines and a much better outcome. There's also some parts of the drawing where the line art isn't completely colored in. Now for this, you could use the brush tool to color in the parts that aren't colored. Along with this, maybe add some shade to the colors to make the drawing have more depth, or to make it more interesting. That's all I really had to say about the appearance. I really like the design, and other than the line work and some spots not being colored in, the drawing is overall pretty good. So onto the bio. Basics. Name, Tomiko Ada. Height, 5'10". Body weight, 51 pounds, malnourished type. This may change while he is going through treatment for this. Hair color slash length, pastel blue slash blue gray, based on lighting. Stops at jawline. Eye color, dark brown. Left eye has gone blind, appears to be cloudy, and is pupil. Other eye is not too far from this. Skin, supposed to be fair, but is damn near white because of vitamin deficiency. Currently going through treatment. Clothes, gray turtleneck sweater to hide his frail body, black jeans and red converse. White eye patch over blind eye and heart contacts on the other. Voice, something you'd expect from an UK type boy. Kinda high pitched, but not too childlike. UK being the quote unquote bottom in a yaoi or boy ex boy relationship in an anime. But for this character, more likely someone with a softer, somewhat higher pitched voice, as the bio suggests. Age 17 to 19. If he lets you lift up his shirt or pull down his pants, you can see his burn marks and scars everywhere. Personality tends to keep to himself, unable to cope with rejection. A manipulative little shit. Soft-spoken beta male, sexually maladaptive, socially awkward, and an obsessive, controlling bastard. Real quick, for the personality in particular. Instead of making a list, I think you should make at least one sentence for each trait to give more of an explanation of that trait. Now I know the personality traits will be explained to the backstory, as in what made them that way. An example would be how he is socially awkward. But if you explain how he acts like that by saying something like, Tomiko is socially awkward. This makes him keep to himself and be very soft-spoken around others. Or, because Tomiko is socially awkward, he finds it harder to communicate with others. This makes him soft-spoken, which is why he tends to keep to himself. It can give you a better understanding of your character and how they would react to different situations. Anyways, moving on. Hobbies. Journaling, fish keeping, coding, hacking into senpai's computer slash phone camera to watch her, undress or listen in if she's talking to someone, and writing about his feelings for senpai. Weakness. He's basically got little to no muscle at all, so fighting to kill anyone is out of the question. The poor thing gets sick easily because of the weakened immune system. Insomnia keeps him awake because he's still paranoid that his biological parents are out to get him. Thunderstorms remind him of Osamu's loud booming voice when he's about to get a beating. He'll end up in tears if senpai isn't there to hold him tight and tell him it's okay. Poor self-esteem, suicidal thought, and self-mutilation. Strength. Since he has a demon at his disposal, he can get rid of anyone trying to get close to senpai without anyone suspecting him. He has a greater understanding of computers and hacking more than anyone. So if he wanted the nuclear codes, he'll get them. Dating senpai has given him a sense of self-worth, so he doesn't need to feel less of a person anymore. He now has a counselor to help him deal with the mental disorders. Loves. His new parents a 90 gallon goldfish tank they have set up in the living room. He finds the manner they swim in very relaxing. ASMR helps him go to sleep a lot quicker along with the nightlight and aromatherapy. Senpai holding him like a little spoon and using her fingers to comb through his hair. The beta fish that Senpai has in her room because that too is relaxing. Udon and beef stew that Senpai makes for him during lunch. Adores the nickname Honey Bunch from Senpai as well as Blue Bonnet. Holding Senpai's hand makes him feel more secure and safe. 
any other kind of affection from senpai. Playing with senpai's, um, <laughs> breasts. <laughs> Hates. Balloons and thunder. Both make loud noises and sound too much like a whipping noise of a beating. Being alone with no one else to tell him it's okay. Biological parents. More afraid of them than anything. Any male or female taking senpai's attention away from him. Raw tomatoes, lettuce, cucumbers, and bell peppers. They're absolutely disgusting to him, but he needs to eat them anyway to get more vitamins in his system. Having to take his supplement pills. B12, iron, vitamin K, and A. They taste disgusting to him, so Senpai has to encourage him to eat them or hide them in a drink of some sort. Others. Universe that he lives in. The year is 3020. Japan's tectonic plates has collided with America's and they become one country uniting history and culture together. Due to global warming, the countries Canada, Greenland, Russia, Norway, Finland have lost a bit of land because of the cap of ice that used to be there is gone and the ocean flooded over. A virus broke out worldwide in the year 2979 because of the global warming and the virus that was frozen on ice was brought back. The epidemic affected agriculture and humans thus the population went down three-fourths, affecting the plants first and moving its way up to the humans. The only ones that survived were the ones who could afford the vaccines, which cost the same amount of buying two-day admission to Disney World for each family member. After the epidemic, Koi Gatiki, private school system, and a few others changed so that, based on your net worth, you were assigned a significant other whose net worth was almost the same. Graduates were expected to then use their wealth and resources to increase population's health, finding eco-friendly alternatives to oil, gas, and coal, ultimately rebuild the earth back to its former glory. Some laws that were added to the fused Japan and America, Jamaria, are Couples as young as 15 are allowed to marry, not excluding same-sex marriages. Required to raise at least one child as, as the successor. Same-sex couples were given children that were born from an artificial womb using one of the partner's eggs or sperm. The other is provided by a donor. Abortions are outlawed. Babies will be given to another couple. Allowed to divorce once. Government wants couples to stick together to raise the child they have. Tomiko's biological grandparents lived through the breakout and had to watch their sibling die in a painful, slow death because their parents couldn't afford shots for everyone in the family. They grew up with the mindset that if their parents had enough money, they all would have survived, but didn't, and ended up teaching the same to Tomiko's parents and forcing the lesson into their brains so they'd never forget. At the time Tomiko was a toddler, it hadn't become national law to start teaching teens in high school to raise kids. Technology has hit a standstill during the breakout, so his Earth does have hovering cars, but still doesn't have a cure for rabies, cancer, or this new outbreak. Tomiko's parents run a cell phone company similar to Samsung. The problem of Senpai being the most sought after girl in school is the rule of changing the significant other you are assigned with. If you can take a test similar to an SAT exam and get a score of 2,600 or higher along with the consent of the wanted significant other. Okay, so the bio is good. I like how the creator made a universe of their own and gives detail about the history of that world. But Tomiko being able to summon a demon at will seems too powerful. Especially considering that he can literally get his hands on nuclear codes if he wanted. To be honest, both seem like way too much power for a 17 to 19 year old teenager to have. Maybe instead of summoning a demon or getting nuclear codes, he can access the dark web and talk to assassins and have any rivals killed without the crime linking back to him. This way, he can still keep his computer skills and he won't be caught for the murders of any rivals. This is just a suggestion and you're free to use and change any of the details if you'd like. If you do decide to keep the demon summoning and nuclear codes, I'd recommend choosing just one of the two because that seemed like a lot of power for one person. Lastly, the backstory. His biological mother, Katashi Ara, pointers about her, most likely cheating on her husband. There was never love in this relationship, only with Osama because of how much money they made together. Obsessed with self-image and buys lots of makeup to keep looking young, likes to keep up with the latest trends, secretly wishes Tomiko would commit suicide so she doesn't have to look at him anymore. The one who started calling Tomiko a dog because in her eyes he's lost his humanity. Often forgets to get flu shots for him since he is a quote unquote dog. Stop touching him altogether when he turned four because he's quote unquote dirty. Has Tomiko call her Katashi Sama instead of Okasan, mother. If he did, she'd verbally abuse him and lower his self worth to nothing. Currently in prison for child abuse. 
His biological father, Osamu Ada, pointers about him, most likely cheating on his wife, a workaholic, has so many expectations to meet at home, media, and work, so he cheats to get away from it all, prefers to go to strip clubs late at night so he doesn't have to deal with Tomiko or Katashi, is the one who buys low quality dog food, doesn't care if the brand has been recalled a few times, is cheap, smuggles the five gallon water jugs from work so he doesn't have to deal with the odor if Tomiko died from dehydration. Already mentally tired from working so hard to avoid the family, so if he comes in with zero patience, all help would break loose if he found out that Tomiko embarrassed the bloodline again. Currently in prison for child abuse. Adopted parents. An older couple in the early 60s that have been wanting another child since the first was out to college. When Senpai mentions about her patient and his background info, they immediately wanted to take them in as their son. Childhood is precious and they wanted to help cherish what was left of it. They're mostly a background character, nothing else needs to be known other than they adopt Tomiko-kun and live in Senpai's neighborhood. His parents were taught that money was the only thing that kept you alive on this planet. The more money you had, the more popular you were. Tomiko's parents didn't bother with the importance of how to raise a child or that it would take a lot of time and money and patience to raise one. Both of them were greedy and neither of them were willing to spend so much on one child. So they went the first four years of parenting barely getting by because no one told them how much of a hassle it was. Feed the child, burp the child, dress, bathe, lull to sleep. Eventually their patience wore thin after Tomiko turned age four. Katashi and Osamu had so much pressure and high expectations to be met as well as bringing up a kid became too much. They confined him to one room, the smallest room the house could have. It only had a single blanket to sleep on, one bathroom, a five pound bag of dog food, as well as a five gallon water jug to drink from. His basic education came from a single work at your own pace program of an outdated tablet. Attempts were made to grab attention from his parents, fighting at middle school and getting low grades on purpose, and they always ended in failure with him getting punished in an abusive manner, having him sit with hot coal on his lap, not eating anything for a week, referring slash treating him as a dog, and denied to talk to either of them for any reason. The main reason why it took so long for anyone to notice was that A. His parents always made excuses not to show up to parent-teacher conferences because their son was an embarrassment to the bloodline. B. Whenever guests were around, he was told to stay in his room and not make any noise. C. Tomiko lacked the knowledge to communicate well, so he usually stayed silent. Thinking so lowly of himself, he began to treat himself as a dog, taking baths every month so he'd smell weird at school, and that lowers the chances of him making any friends, and using dental sticks instead of brushings so his breath is really bad. During lunch, Senpai, who is trained to be a nurse, notices that her fellow classmate doesn't look so good. She offers him lunch and begins to ask about his health and he responds with very concerning answers until she asked him to lift up his sweater sleeve. She'd seen how thin he was and immediately pieced together why he'd been looking the way he was. Some calls were made and he eventually ended up staying at her house getting checked up by her father. Senpai would come home during lunch to cook her patient a healthy meal and make sure he'd taken his vitamins. His health began to improve over time as well as his communication skills. Senpai had become his savior and he fell head over heels in love with her. This is where his yandere self begins to emerge, first putting Senpai on a pedestal that laid on top of the largest building in the world, believing wholeheartedly that she was God and that she saved him from a life of abuse and psychological trauma. Soon he based an entire religion around it, performing sacred rituals at an abandoned shrine at night, lighting red candles in a circular form with a pentagram in the center, a picture of his God hung above him. Tomiko performed animal sacrifices taking cats that were out of the wrong place at the wrong time, then proceeded to um, play with himself after the sacrifices were given. He'd pray to one day be able to wed his goddess and flood the world over so they could repopulate. These delusions drove Tomiko to summon a demon to kill anyone that dared disrespect his god, since he was unfit to do it himself. Eventually, six months staying at Senpai's house would come to a close and Tomiko was given new parents. They were an older couple in their early 60s. They lived down the street from Senpai's house. Tomiko believed this to be another blessing from his god. His surname changed from Ara to Miyabe. True, he won't be able to sleep in the same room as Senpai when he needed to, but since he's now a part of a different family, his net worth has gone up and was able to date and marry Senpai like he wanted to. Unfortunately, it wasn't going to be easy, since Senpai was popular with the boys and the most sought after girl in school, and that Senpai herself only saw him as her patient so he used her kind and giving nature against her. 
frequently bringing up sensitive topics like suicide and self-harm during conversations or twisting her words in a way to make it seem like she's not being a very good nurse. If she leads him to do a task X and Y, knowing full well that she was uncomfortable with it, but still wanted to help her patient in any way. Soon she began to date him out of pity, allowing his behavior of possessiveness to worsen over time. For example, pressuring her to have sex with him as a means of strengthening the spiritual and emotional bond he has with her. It didn't matter if they did it yesterday, he wanted to feel the pleasure again. Tamiko wanted more of her affection and wouldn't stand to see her leave whether it be for work or school. Anxiety forbids him to be alone. He has to be with senpai or his counselor or new parents or a panic attack will occur. The schizophrenia doesn't help, either always urging him to find where senpai is because his parents will somehow escape jail and beat him to death one day. Senpai kind of resolved this by giving him a little routine to help cope with the situation when she isn't around. 1. Taking deep breaths while messing around with the stress slime she gave him. 2. Repeating the words she had always told him, it's okay, I'm here now. And 3. Having a picture of Senpai in mind to help calm him down. So I really like the backstory. It gives a lot of explanation as to what made Tomiko a yandere. He's not just labeled a yandere for no reason. The creator explained what made him possessive over his senpai. But as I said before, Tomiko being able to summon a demon is too much power combined with having access to nuclear codes. Now there is a possible way to make this work. If senpai rejects Tomiko in the future, he could use either the demon summoning or nuclear codes as a threat to make senpai accept his love. Again, he could also use his computer skills to his advantage by visiting the dark web to hire an assassin. But combining all of that would be too powerful. Again, I'd recommend only using one of those advantages, since both are very powerful on their own. And about him creating a religion, I have to say that I kind of like that idea. It's interesting to see how far Tomiko was willing to show his devotion to the senpai. This is a very interesting OC. I really like the creativity of the universe. The creator gave good reasons as to what turned Tomiko into a yandere. If you're interested in the creator and their OC, I left a link to their DeviantArt in the description. I recommend going to check them out and supporting them and their character. Tell me in the comments below if you want me to review your OC, and I'll be happy to check it out. Anyways, thank you for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Bye!